The MacBook Pro 14 is essentially everything that I've always wanted in a laptop since I purchased my very first MacBook Pro 13 way back in the ancient long, long ago of 2017. Is this essentially the perfect laptop? Let's find out. And while we're finding out, I'd like to thank today's not sponsor, me. I've recently started a brand new YouTube channel focusing on my love of typing and making things. And putting those two together mean we've got a whole new channel about making keyboards and all sorts of other accessories. You can check it out at the link above and in the description if you want to join in on the fun. Back to the MacBook Pro. Quick note, despite the joke, no one is actually sponsoring today's video. Apple is not paying me to say anything about this computer and no one provided or gave me this MacBook. I purchased this myself and these are my opinions, and yes, they are opinions. Everybody's got them, and they all... Also, this is the base model MacBook Pro 14. It's got the 8-core M1 Pro processor, 16 gigabytes of unified memory, and the 512 gigabyte solid-state drive. The reason I wanted to specify this is because there's a pretty big variation in what the MacBook Pro 14 can do, this is the one that I've got. That's one of the things that I very, very much continue to like. I just like how customizable this is. You can have that lower end, and I'm I'm definitely not gonna call it cheap MacBook that let's be frank, it still has more power than any of the other standard M1 computers or you can have, l you can have a literal monster computer that has power rivaling actual desktop computers. Yes, a desktop computer has the potential for more power because you can give it much more energy, but the fact that a 14 inch laptop can even be included in this conversation is remarkable. And while this video will sound similar to my thoughts previously, that's why I make the videos the way I do. I do these follow-ups to either confirm or deny my impressions over the course of time and additional use. I never call what I do reviews because with software updates and changing preferences, I don't think you can ever actually fully review something because of that changing nature of technology. But let's switch modes really quickly and move to the things that I've disliked because while this is essentially the perfect laptop, essentially means there's some wiggle room in that discussion. The first thing I've really disliked is the same thing I dislike about the MacBook Pro 16. There is some wonkiness with Mac OS Monterey. I think I've mentioned this in most of my videos about these laptops, but Monterey is giving me some really weird issues and has made this strictly technically faster computer slower to actually use than my M1 Mac Mini. The first thing I've had problems with is when I plug my MacBook into an external RAID. Now, yes, my external RAID is made up of spinning hard drives, and from a non-technical perspective, it feels like the drives go to sleep incredibly fast, and it takes them much longer to spin up anytime I need to use it, or anytime I use a program or function that touches on storage drives, which is basically everything you do with the laptop. For example, using Spotlight Search goes from being an instant way to find things to taking 30 or 40 seconds each search. When I typed that in the script and when I read that back to you right now, that doesn't sound like a big deal. But when you are actively using a computer, especially for one that you just spent this much money on, that feels like an eternity. Yes, solid state drives have been much more reliable for me and I haven't had any issue with those, but 24 terabytes is already expensive with HDDs and it's outrageously expensive with SSDs. And the most frustrating part about this whole thing for me is my RAID still works seamlessly and well with my M1 Mac mini running Big Sur. If I could put Big Sur on these new M1 MacBooks, I absolutely would, but I can't, so ugh. And while yes, not everybody is a video editor, I certainly spend a ton of time doing that each day, and even when I'm not plugged into an external storage device, I'm having a real problem with Final Cut Pro where the audio waveforms just show up whenever they feel like it. Again, it sounds like a small issue, and if you don't do video editing, don't even worry about this part of the video because most of my complaints have to do with video editing, you know the thing I do with most of my time. But when I edit these videos, I look at these waveforms. So when they don't show up, everything takes so much longer than it needs to. This happens on both the M1 Pro MacBook Pro 14 and my M1 Max version of the MacBook Pro 16. The thing that I liked so much about macOS Big Sur is it was perfectly stable for me and it made my workflows faster and faster over time. And Monterey, despite all of its new features, in certain situations, it's making my workflow slower. I'm always hopeful that the next update will fix my minor issues because as we'll see here over the course of the rest of this video, this laptop is just about as close to perfect as I think we can get with our current levels of technology. At least perfect for somebody like me that spends most of my days doing office work type stuff during the day and being a masked YouTuber fighting tech crimes at night. No, I'm not actually Batman. I'm the everyday dad. If I were a gamer, I definitely wouldn't call this a perfect computer. It's almost like perfection is in the eye of the beholder or something like that. Yes, I'm getting old and I'm a dad. I say things like that. Let's move away from those negatives and to where this laptop really shines. And fam, does it shine bright like a diamond? That's a 
There's a song, right? The thing that I've liked most about the MacBook Pro 14 all this time later is just how much of an all-in-one inclusive package it is. Yes, we'll talk more about specifics here shortly, but honestly, it's very shocking that what we have is essentially an Ultrabook that can have those levels of power inside of it. And it's not all about power though, it's about quality of life combined with power and all of the other little things that Apple does that makes a MacBook a MacBook, and I get. I can already hear people typing in the comments right now. I get that that last sentence is pretty fluffy language and a big criticism about Apple products and those that enjoy them is that fluffy language and the lack of hard numbers and examples of how this is better. We talk about the ecosystem, but we don't talk enough about raw unlimited power and overclocking, am I right? Where's the RG, we need RGB on this MacBook. And I think that's just gonna stand as the differences between the two sorts of folks. And that's okay. If you like muscle cars and building out huge PC rigs with gigantic graphics cars and CPUs that straddle the line between computer and AI, Sure, that's fine. Right now, I have a dedicated custom PC that I built with a 5950X and a 3080 Ti. And if you like an electric vehicle that doesn't need gas, but works to get you where you need to go as easy as possible and have an ecosystem built all around it, that's cool too. I have a hybrid truck right now that can power my house when we lose power with its electric engine. It's awesome. That was my olive branch that I put in the middle of the MacBook video, but tying it back to the MacBook, I love the total system concept that this MacBook represents. Seriously powered. The M1 Max that you can get in this thing is a crazy processor that comes real close to my old 5800X in terms of multi-core performance. It has graphical chops that allow for video rendering times unseen on any of my devices, including that beefy desktop PC of mine. But you can also get a very capable chip with the eight core processor option. And the benefit of that is it will allow more battery life while having just as much, if not more power than the other M1 standard laptops. And next thing, I mean, Leading right on to that, the next thing that Apple has really nailed over the past couple of years is battery life. Holy crap, could you imagine having a computer that would last this long even a couple of years ago? And again, remember, normally when you get a computer that can last all day, it needs a gigantic battery. Well, the 14-inch MacBook is only so big, so you can't fit in the same kind of battery that you can inside of a MacBook Pro 16. You get a reported 17 hours of battery life here. Yes, it is the lowest of all the new Apple chip laptops, but 17 hours is absolutely bonkers when you look at the rest of the laptop space. And something Apple absolutely does not get enough credit for when I watch other laptop videos. When we look at productivity machines, you get the full power of this chip when it's not plugged into a wall. I spend a lot of my day right now also using a Dell Windows laptop for my day job, and that battery can barely last through a single meeting without making me twitch. Like, it makes me nervous that I need to plug it into the wall or something. Plus, when it's running on the battery, I can promise you things will run slower and choppier because you just, you see your processor, you just take off a big old chunk of the power without being plugged in. That's not just on that crappy work-provided laptop, but even on my top-of-the-line XPS 17, if you are not directly plugged in, you are not getting everything the chip can do. And I'm singling out Dell a lot in this video, but it's not a Dell thing, it's a Windows thing. And while 17 hours is probably a little bit of a stretch, and I can guarantee that it's less than that if you were to run this computer straight out with the highest end processor, I can say from a ton of experience that I've never had a problem with battery life. I'll generally end a day at about half power if I can't plug this in at all. That's fantastic. I can't overstate how important this is for those of us that are always working and we don't have time to stop and charge things. And for another facet of my personality, it's also great for us forgetful folks that don't always remember to charge throughout the day. That's a win-win because I gotta tell you, my short-term memory, not very good. Moving over to the laptop itself, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a better do-it-all laptop body. We've spent most of this video so far talking about how this works as a laptop, but with this newly designed chassis, this also seamlessly fits in as a desktop computer. And one of the things that you missed out in the previous M1 computers is the ability to use multiple monitors or even have regular standard ports. Well, the MacBook Pro 14 has both HDMI and it has Thunderbolt 4. With just this small change, you can now have this laptop plugged into three separate monitors. Personally, I only use one. I mean, one that costs as much as three monitors, but that's a video for another day. The MacBook Pro 14 is hands down the easiest computer to use for both sort of work environments. Literally right now, all I need to do is use one USB-C to Thunderbolt cable, and I plug that directly into my monitor. Then I've got Bluetooth mouse and keyboard, and that Thunderbolt cable will even power the laptop because it doesn't have that stringent power requirements 
unless you have the top of the line processor. Sure, I've got an additional cable for my wired mechanical keyboard, but sometimes a man has a vice and those mechanical keyboards are quickly becoming mine. Again, you can follow along with that channel if you want to. There's a link somewhere around here. But this is dead simple and even YouTubers can be happy here because the SD card reader works great. I've seen people having issues with it online, but mine on both of my laptops has been working fantastic since I bought them, so Hopefully those are isolated issues that can be fixed pretty easily. Another aspect of the body that I like, but I'm not super sold on is the typing experience. Again, remember I spend most of my time typing and the keyboard here by itself, if we look at the keyboard in a vacuum, it's fantastic. It's got a lot of snap. It's very well laid out. It's just a great keyboard and it's by far the best that Apple's ever made. And I'm sorry, Lenovo, but you've still yet to let me borrow a ThinkPad to debunk that Apple is the best. So Apple continues to be the best. The only thing that I don't like is that because the body of the laptop itself is slightly thicker, you do get more wrist discomfort. Doesn't matter how nice the typing experience, if you are in discomfort when typing. I mean, this thing is darn sharp. I really like how the MacBook Air does it where it's slightly wedged so you don't get that aggressive pressure against the outer edge of the laptop on your forearms right here. If I was making this laptop, I'd make either softer edges or give it a slight wedge to make it more comfortable over long periods of time. But when typing, it's amazing and it's really easy to get into a groove, which I think is the most important part of typing. And you can't say good things about the new MacBook without once again talking about the display. Holy cow. This display is the best you're ever gonna find on a laptop, period. It's gorgeous and I had to buy that stupidly expensive LG monitor to get something similar to what I could get on my MacBook Pro. Fast refresh, high contrast, beautiful colors, and the best bezels that Apple's ever come up with. Thumbs up all around for the monitor. Plus the new camera on top is still amazing and yes, folks to this day complain about the notch, but whatever. The darn thing houses a bigger camera and with how important cameras are for today's virtual meetings, that's a really important upgrade and I've used it a ton over the past few months. And if you like this video and you like keyboards, you like watching somebody just build stuff and have a bunch of fun, you can find my brand new channel by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.